Hi, my name is Brian Smith, and in this video we're going to look at controlling containers running in Podman with systemd unit files. I'm on a RHEL 8.2 system using the RHEL 8 container tools module, and I'm working with Podman 1.6.4 in this video. To start, I'll create a new Nextcloud container with Podman, and then I'll run Podman PS to show that the container is currently running. If we were to reboot the host at this point, the container would not automatically restart. In many environments, it would be desirable to have the container automatically start at boot, and using systemd unit files with podman can accomplish this, which we'll cover in this video. Next, I'll use the podman top command to show the container's main PID number on the host. I'll simulate the container crashing by running a kill minus nine on the container's main process. If we run podman ps, we can see that the container is no longer running. In many environments, it would be useful to have containers automatically restart if they unexpectedly crash. With Podman, there are a couple of options to do this. When running in the container, we could specify the minus minus restart on failure option, or we can use a systemd unit file to automatically restart the container, which we'll cover in this video. All right, let's take a look at the Podman generate systemd command. This command will generate a systemd unit file for a Podman container. One of the options for this command is the restart policy, which will default to on failure. For more information on the available restart policies, we'll run man systemd.service. As you can see, there are several options such as always, on failure, on abnormal, etc. Refer to this manual page for full details. We'll go ahead and run podman generate systemd for our Nextcloud container, and we'll redirect the output to the etsy systemd system nextcloud-container.service file. We'll go ahead and cap that file to take a look at it, and as you can see, the restart policy defaulted to on failure, and we can also see the other details about the systemd service that was generated by Podman. Next, we'll run a systemctl daemon reload, and at this point, we can run systemctl commands to manage our Nextcloud container just like we would any other systemd service. For example, we can run systemctl status on Nextcloud container to check the status, which shows that the container is not currently running. So we can go ahead and run systemctl start nextcloud-container to start the container, and we can verify it's running by checking the status again with systemctl. We'll go ahead and find the container's main PID number on the host with the podman top command, and we'll simulate the container crashing by running a kill minus nine on that PID. If we run a journal ctl minus u nextcloud container, we can see that systemd restarted the container, and we can also see the container restart count was logged. If we run a podman ps, we can verify that the container was in fact restarted. If we run systemctl is-enabled nextcloud container, we can see that it is not currently enabled to start on boot. If we would like the container to run at boot automatically, we can go ahead and run systemctl enable nextcloud-container. And now if we run is-enabled again, systemd reports that it is enabled to start at boot. So at this point, if we were to reboot the host, systemd would automatically restart the container at boot. Next, we'll look at how this works in relation to rootless containers running as unprivileged users. We'll SSH to the host as the Brian account, and then we'll go ahead and run a container with Podman called nextcloud-rootless. We'll verify it is running with the podman ps command, and then we'll run podman top to find the container's main PID number on the host. We'll run a kill minus nine on this PID to simulate the container crashing, and if we run podman ps, we can see that the container did not restart, just as we saw previously with a root account. Systemd supports running a user instance of systemd as an unprivileged user. No additional permissions or sudo access are required to run a user instance of systemd. To work with the user instance of systemd, we'll create a .config slash systemd slash user directory under the Brian account's home directory. We'll then run a podman generate systemd for the nextcloud-rootless container and save it as the nextcloud-rootless.service file in the directory we just created. We need to edit this file because the systemd targets are different for a user instance of systemd. We'll change the last line from multi-user.target to default.target, and then we'll go ahead and save the file. Because we are working with a user instance of systemd, all of the systemctl commands will have the minus minus user flag added on the command line. Next, we'll run a systemctl minus minus user daemon reload. And then we can check the status of the container by running systemctl minus minus user status on our nextcloud rootless container. The container is not currently running, so we can start it with a systemctl minus minus user start nextcloud rootless. And we can verify it's running with the systemctl minus minus user status nextcloud service. 
Next, we'll find the container's main PID number on the host with the podman top command, and we'll run a kill minus 9 to simulate the container crashing. If we run podman ps, we can see that our user instance of systemctl automatically restarted the container. If we run a systemctl minus minus user is dash enabled nextcloud rootless, we can see that it is not currently enabled. We'll run a systemctl minus minus user enable nextcloud rootless and then run systemctl minus minus user is dash enable to verify that it is now enabled. However, if we were to reboot the host at this point, by default the container would not automatically start at boot. With user instances of systemd, by default, if the container service is enabled, it will automatically start the container service when the user logs in and automatically stop the container service when the user logs out. If we would like this user's container to automatically start at boot and to remain running after the user logs out, as root we could run login-ctl enable linger for the Brian account. Once lingering is enabled, if we were to reboot the host, the user instance of systemd would automatically start the Nextcloud rootless container at boot. Well, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope you have a great day today.